Now we're going to put the bottom hem in our panel. I've got the bottom edge of the panel, the top is at the other side, and I'm going to fold up eight inches for my hem. I have a line that marks eight inches on my table, but if you don't, which you probably won't have a line like that, you can simply use a ruler and fold up to your eight inches and then go further down the fabric and fold up eight inches and continue on down the whole width of the panel. Once you've got it folded up the eight inches, then iron it in place. Now that I've got my eight inches of fabric ironed and folded up for our hem, next we're going to just place the edge of the fabric in our crease so that we end up with a double four and a half inch hem. I'm gonna fold that over all the way down the panel and then I'm going to iron that too. After we iron it, then we put our pins in, just to pin it in place. There are several different ways that you can secure your bottom hem. If you have a blind hemmer, which is a sewing machine that only hems, then you can use that to sew in the bottom hem. Some home machines have a hemming stitch that you could use. If you don't want to sew the hem at all, you can use a fusible bonding web, which you just place in between the folded hem and the fabric and iron in place. The other way that you can secure the bottom hem is to hand sew it. And that's what I'm going to show you today. For hand sewing, I like to use a hand quilting thread. It's a nice, heavy, strong thread. I've chosen a red color so that you can see it on the video. Normally, I would try to match the fabric and either use a white or a green thread. I like to use a long darning needle for my hand sewing. And I've cut off a piece of the thread, probably 30 to 35 inches. I'm going to thread my needle. And then in one end of the thread, I'm going to make a knot. I'm going to wind the thread around my finger, twist, and then pull it down to make my knot. I'm going to start by putting my needle in the back side of our folded hem so that our knot is hidden in the hem. I'm going to take a little bite of fabric on this front part of the panel, pull through, and then next I'm going to put my needle in this top fold and run it along and come out probably about a half inch down the panel. Pull through, take another little bite of fabric, and then go through the fold. Pull through. Now you can kind of see what I'm doing. Here's the little bites of fabric that I took on the front, and you just barely see how tiny my stitch is. And when the fat, when the thread matches the fabric, you won't be able to see that at all. So I'll take another little bite of fabric, put my needle through the fold, and bring it on through. One more time. And I'll continue doing this all the way down the drapery panel. I've come to the other side of the panel and I'm going to take a couple of more stitches and then I will show you how to knot off the end of, of your thread when you're at the end of the panel. So I'm going to take a little bit of fabric like I have been but instead of pulling all the way through, I'm going to leave a loop. I'm going to put my needle through the loop and pull through. That's my first knot. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take another little bite of fabric, pull through, and leave a little loop. Put my needle through it 
and pull through again. To hide my thread, I'm going to go through the knot, and I'm not going through the front of the fabric. I'm only going through this fold. I pull through, and then that will help hide the knot and the end of my thread. I'll clip that off, and then we're done hand hemming the panel.